Okay, uh, welcome everybody to Unclean Has Explained. Uh, this is our Patreon channel that will eventually go on YouTube. And we're here we're just going to explain, you know, each episode to you. And have fun doing it. Hope you like it. Well, hey, I want to talk about this first episode here. Who killed Jamal Blue? This is, uh, this grabs, you know, this pulls you in right away. So what, uh, what got, what got your idea going for this to, to start off with such a, uh, a shocking moment? Okay, so the whole premise of buying Unclean Hands is uh, I wanted to make a version of Power and Snowfall, but a southern version. Mm-hmm. That snowfall is basically the, the West Coast. Right. And Power, you know, it's New York and Northeast area. But most African Americans I know live in the South. So I'm like, okay, it's a niche there. It's a fan base there. Yeah. So that's what I did it. So basically, I can put this, in, Unclean Hand can basically be in any country if I want it or every region. But I wanted to do the South because I figured, you know, that's a niche and it was a demand there. Mm-hmm. So being at the first episode, I had to grab the audience. Yeah. And what grabs you more than something happening to a child? That that image that you've got in there really like made me stop. Like I had to pause it mm-hmm. because I was like, damn, that, that really gets to me seeing that image. And that really kicks that story off as to why there's so, such high emotions going on throughout this whole story. Yeah, I mean, it took so, it took a while to get the the image that I wanted, you know, because you know the animation is coming out later, mm-hmm. probably by the end of the year. But I it's still I wanted to make it something that would grab you. And I had a couple of people even say in the comments on YouTube, and people bought the book like, "Wow, yeah, why did you do it to a kid?" Uh, but yeah, now you're interested, right? Right. Now you want know what happened, and trust me, I'm gonna take you on the ride with this one. So also, do, do we know where this is taking place or it, could it be in any southern town? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to give it a name so then people like, okay, this, this is not accurate enough for this right. region. So I just said a southern town. Yeah. But it is a time period. This is basically around 95. Okay. Remember, it's a trilogy. Right, So right. Unclean Hands 2 is what I'm writing now. It's going to be totally different, but it's going to be like 2008. You know, it's 15 years later type of thing. Okay. And, you know... That's when you'll know who's really the whole series about. Because trust me, on the first one, no one gets it. Yeah. And I had it ready in your face the whole time. Ah, okay. So you're setting up a whole lot of dominoes yes. that are going to keep falling throughout yes, this whole yes. trilogy. Yes, so it's a trilogy. Yeah. And at the very end, you're like, oh, man, okay, cool. Yeah, they deserved it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then we can do an unclean hand somewhere else, you know, your version. Of, I'm thinking about UK or Canada. So yeah, this could go international in terms of where this story of course, goes. Of yeah, course. that's what that's that's what I did it for. Every one of my series are like that. Yeah, they can go anywhere. Well, and the characters also started started really jumping out right away. You could start getting a sense of all their individual personalities as to what their motivations were, what people were looking for, you know, what they're trying to do, but also just that there is a whole history behind why Jamal has has just been shot mm-hmm. see the thing is with this and uh, this is to a lot of writers out there because basically i write a screenplay first mm-hmm. then turn into a book which you can get on amazon or uh, mm-hmm. barnes and nobles and then from there i make it an audio book so the thing is the key is to grab them on the first scene yeah the second scene maybe the third is just to explain who everybody is the characteristics of that character after that especially with me it's action 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 to the very yes. end so you know let me get you in the beginning then explain who everybody is and their characteristics and who they're about, their backgrounds. And after that, we got to have action. And you're never going to be bored. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, having watched most of the series, I can <laughs> attest to that. And we'll get to that as we go along here. But True. anything else about this first episode that you really want people to know? Well, I want them to know especially about Thomas. Mm-hmm. Just happened to be there and his yeah. family background. Thomas is very important as a reporter there. But also the human side of Romeo Blue and his wife, Dee. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they might be, uh, he might be a game bang or whatever. He's still a father. You mm-hmm. understand? He's still a father and he still, it hurts when your kids die. Right. You know? And the mom too, you'll learn more about her later. But still, I wanted that connection that, you know, even though you might you could be uh, whatever background, you're still a father. Right. And that's why I want to touch on this first episode. Well, and that's what I think was was genius about the start is that if we'd started off really knowing who he was and his history was, some people might be less sympathetic to who he is. But watching his kid and it, it get killed and watching his wife suffer mm-hmm. here in this first chapter, 
it gives you empathy for him right away, even though you learn a lot of things about him later on. It still establishes that he's, you know, that he's a, that he cares about True, his because you have to and, be a monster yeah. to not care about a child. You right. understand? So that's why I wrote that for. And I just want to get your, you know, emotion strings going. Yeah. But yeah, uh, trust me, I'm taking you on a hell of a ride on this one. <laughs> and wait till part two, kid. Even better. All right. So tell me some more about these characters. Like, who are the inspiration for people like uh, Loco and uh, and Dee Dee? Like, do, do these come from personal experience well, or with, with, with Deidre? Well, Dee Dee is Deidre. You know that that's basically you know that's my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, she actually did the voice on that one. So, okay. You know, so I actually put her in there, and some of the characteristics were her, and some are not. But you know, I I took. Things from different women in my life on that, and uh, and the dad itself, Loco. Mm-hmm. I have so many members in my family that has a background similar to that, so that was easy to do. Mm-hmm. But since on this one, it's the '90s, like mid '95, whatever. So I had to put Crips and Blood. Right. Eh, that I had a problem with that with my family. Most of these guys are Bloods or whatever. Right. Right. Which I don't understand that either. But hey. I had to get their permission, like, you read it first, you know? And they're like, hey, why are you doing the buzz like this? So like, look, everybody's going to be treated equal in the end. Yeah. Just, just ride with it. And when it was done, they're like, okay, cool. You represented both well. Okay. And that's what I want to do. But, yeah, I just want to let people know, you know, just because they're in that situation, you don't know how they got there. Right. And they're trying to do the best thing they can to get out of it. Yeah. To, to make it work. And that's what we all do, right? Mm-hmm. Try to figure it out. When I thought that was what was... Uh was interesting in this first episode was starting to watch them have trying to have that separate personal life, mm-hmm. but watching their the rest of their life starting encroaching upon that with the uh, with the violence that was coming from things that have to do with other than their family. In the end, uh, it's all about choices, you know. Yeah, the one choice can mess up everything. Mm-hmm. So you got to think before you do it. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So tell me more about Thomas. And what, what he's doing here at this this baseball game and kind of where he fits into the whole story so far. Okay, so Thomas, basically his family is the funeral home of choice for, you know, the black community there. Because yeah. there's only one they can really go to. Mm-hmm. So Thomas is there basically just to cover that for his family's family. Sponsored it. He just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Okay. You know, and, and, and let's be honest, he's optimistic. He's like, hey, I see opportunity here. I'm going to take it. I just happen to be there. You know, I'm going to run with it and yeah. see where it goes. And, you know, and he has a good heart, too. He's really trying to help them. But in the end, he's helping himself as well. You know? Right. It's going to help himself. So that's what Tom is there. And Tom is alone for the ride here. So majority of this thing is people are really seeing it through Thomas's eyes. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's sort of the audience proxy for, for the whole thing. Yes. All right. Well, I think those are all our questions for episode one. Uh, yeah. And I want to thank everybody for, you know joining the Patreon channel and being a part of this episode one and the ride there. We're only going to see you more. Uh, be ready for more content. Once again, we're going to put it out before uh, everyone else get it. So if the original episode comes out on Wednesday on YouTube, they explain to be out on Saturday. And only you guys get to get it for Patreon. You know, this is for all your help for supporting us. And we're going to give you something in return. Thank you guys for everything. Please stay tuned.